wing air enables accurate location of shooters. Provides 360 degree coverage, day or night. I'm here at Farnborough Air Show in front of the F-35B static display. This is a single engine stealthy fighter being produced by Lockheed Martin for numerous nations around the globe. This aircraft was supposed to make its international flying debut last week at the Royal International Air Tattoo at Fairford Air Base. Unfortunately, there was an engine fire with an F-35A in the United States on June 23rd, which prompted a grounding of the entire fleet of 98 aircraft. So today we're in front of the mock-up here at the Farnborough Air Show and we've been talking to a couple of test pilots to see its performance. We're here with Billy Flynn, an F-35 test pilot. Billy, can you tell us a little bit about how the F-35 is going to change the air battle? So, F-35 transforms aerial combat. We know this. Uh, we, we leverage what we've learned in, from the F-22 in 10 years of its dominance in aerial warfare. Uh, being stealthy, being essentially invisible, means that you can come and go with impunity, you attack your adversaries without them ever knowing you were there, you are completely offensive all the time, different than the defensive type tactics we've used in the Western world for right. the last 30 some odd years. So you come and go with impunity, they never knew what hit them, and even after their first wave of attacks against them, as they're sorting out who's left, you're attacking them again. Okay. We share so much information amongst the F-35s out there that everybody has so much better a picture in terms of situational awareness than we ever had in fourth generation fighters. Everybody sees the same thing. Right, and what can you tell us about using that uh, MADL data link in those four ships and trading the threat picture? How does that change what the pilot had to do in terms of workload, whether he was in an F-16 or a Typhoon? That's a, so it's a great question. Uh, for more than 30 years, we've dealt with pilot workload in everybody's Air Force. We have fatalities linked to a pilot being overwhelmed with what he had in the cockpit. F-22 and sensor fusion taught us that fusing the information and getting the astonishing certainty from our sensors and meshed together, fused together with that fusion engine, gave us absolute clarity that we could target and kill even when we couldn't see the adversary in front of us. So we all see everything with astonishing certainty, uh, knowing the confidence that is given to us from our various sensors. So we see more and a clearer picture, and we've taken the human out of the loop. Sensor fusion means I'm not prioritizing as a fighter pilot what's good or bad. The fusion engine is doing that for me, and we know it works based on our F-22 experience. And so then your pilots of your four ships can, can designate targets and attack targets more efficiently? Is that sort of the, the way it'll take place on the battlefield? What we will not have is repetitive targeting or redundant targeting or fratricide risks like we had in the past. On those displays, and uh -huh. over on our tactical situation displays, we know who's targeted. You and I know precisely who's targeted what. And there won't be shooting missiles at the same person, which was a risk for us in the past. Everybody has the same information. I know who you've targeted and who the other people in our formation have targeted. We'll right. all pick and choose where we want to go, and we won't make the same mistakes we made in all the fourth generation of fighters. And what do you want to get finished, you as the test team, by the end of the year, in terms of those weapons tests? Right, we need to finish before the uh, Marine Corps is able to declare IOC, we need to be able to have cleared our JDAM, AMRAAM, and uh, laser guided bomb, guide yeah. bomb uh, envelopes. We have very precise uh, attack profiles that we want to use or validate to confirm the accuracy and the capability of the jet and the weapons that they're launching. And that's up ahead of us before the end of the calendar year. Okay, very well. And the Marine Corps IOCs when? Next summer, so summer of 2015. Anything that any of us have ever flown in any of the previous airplanes, we have great confidence that we're heading in the right direction. So here we are talking to Peter Wizard Wilson. He's an F-35 test pilot, especially in the Stovall model. So, Wizard, can you tell us a little bit about the short takeoff and vertical landing characteristics of the F-35 compared to the Harrier, which you used to fly as well? So the Harrier had one too many flight controls in the cockpit. It had a nozzle lever, which allowed the pilot to manually control the angle of the nozzles. History is littered with accidents that have been made by Harrier pilots. Cognitive failures is what we typically call them, and we've effectively designed them out of the F-35. So I don't have a lever in the cockpit that's connected to the engine. It doesn't exist. 
I don't have a lever that's connected to the nozzles. It doesn't exist. In fact, even the attitude of the aeroplane in the hover is controlled purely by the aeroplane. The pilot has no business playing with that in this airplane. So the kind of controls I have are more like positioning controls. The aeroplane fundamentally sits in a hover, does it beautifully, does it far better than I can do it. And what I ask it to do is I ask it to move a bit to the right or move a bit to the left or move forward, move back. And, and how I... do you do that? How do you command those moves? On my left hand, I have what's called an acceleration commander. And the throttle fundamentally, we still call it a throttle, even though it's not connected to the engine. What it does is if I push it forward, I'm asking to accelerate forwards. Or if I push it aft, I'm asking to accelerate backwards. So I have a speed controller, not, a, not an RPM controller. It's not an engine controller. It's a speed control. In my right hand, if I want to go, if I want to make the airplane go to the right, I'll simply take the, the stick and I'll move it to the right. The airplane will come right at some fixed speed until I release the stick, at which point it will stop moving and settle down at the new position. And it will hold the perfect hover again. If I want to go up and down, I actually push and pull on the stick. So in the same way as we do at high speed, when we want to make the ground get closer, we would push on the stick. We want to make the ground go further away. We're going to pull on the stick. We do exactly the same thing in the hover. So cognitively, if you like, in the way my brain thinks, I fly the airplane in the hover the same way as I do at higher speeds. OK. And, and what about sync rate? Do you control the sync rate, or is that all automated within the system? So I control the sync rate depending on how fast I push the stick. I have a, a sync rate that's proportional to the force that I'm pushing. We have a thing called a soft stop. It's actually um, it's a point where the force on the stick becomes non-linear and you come up against a bit of a, a, high, a tougher gradient. That soft stop is very easy to feel and you're coming down at that point at seven feet per second, okay. which is 420 feet per minute. It's a very nice speed to land. And so all the pilots are trained to use the soft stop. We okay. really don't need any other speed. But if you push through the soft stop, you get to the hard stop. And now you're coming down at 12 feet per second. Wizard, tell me the difference between taking off on what will be the UK carriers to host these aircraft and then the uh, Marine Corps ships that would be used for the US aircraft. So the Marine Corps ships that are used to carry the US Marines aircraft have a flat deck. And at the end of the deck, about 200 feet actually from the end, the pilot gets the airplane to rotate nose up in order to use a combination of aerodynamic lift, conventional lift, as well as the propulsive lift coming out of the great lift system here. And that's what causes the airplane to fly away. On the UK ships, we have a ski jump. And so the ski jumps is a, an elegant way to get airborne and buy yourself extra capability. It means that when the airplane comes flying off the front, it's already going upwards. Actually, that allows you to start from a shorter distance so that you or carry more payload into the air um, so that you can operate from a shorter distance or carry more payload. One, one of the two, you, you decide. Okay, and how soon will you start testing that um, ski type system on the British jets? So the ski jump has not yet been tested, but we will be testing it at Pax River in about the next six months or so. We'll do some early work to de-risk the maneuver, just make sure that the flight control system does what we expect it to do. And then going on into 2016, we'll do much, much more of it. Clear out the wind envelope, clear out the weight, the CG, the weapons load, everything else that we need to make sure that we have a good system for the UK.